Welcome back. In this video, we are going to be looking at some ways that we can develop self-awareness as leaders and why the one thing that we all think we should be doing to increase our self-awareness absolutely doesn't work. In our last video, we looked at the importance of self-awareness and why we may not be as self-awareness as leaders as we think that we may be. If you haven't watched that one, maybe check that out first. My name is Eddie Boertis and I'm the founder of Leadership. My mission is to help leaders and teams to design, align, and embed a corporate culture that doesn't suck. Tool number one to build self-awareness. Understand your life story. Over the past 15 years or so, psychologists have focused on a new field of research called narrative identity. The stories that we tell ourselves about our lives don't just shape our personalities, they are our personalities. How we understand and interpret our story frames our current actions and also our future goals. When we confront the impact of our life's challenges, it increases our self-awareness. Which people, experiences and events have had the greatest impact in shaping the person that you have become? In which experiences have you found the greatest passion for leading? How do you frame your challenges and your setbacks in life? The second thing that we can do to create it is, a, is to create a daily habit of self-reflection. Develop a daily practice of setting aside at least 20 minutes to reflect on your life. Focus on what the most important things in your life are and not just the stuff that is happening now. There is a direct correlation between mindfulness and changes in the brain, away from anger and anxiety, and towards a sense of calm and well-being. The third, and probably the most difficult way to build self-awareness, is to seek honest feedback from those individuals around us who we can really trust. Part of self-awareness is external self-awareness, the ability to see clearly how other people see us. We all have traits that others see, but that we are unable to see in ourselves. These blind spots can be addressed by receiving feedback from people who we can trust. Receiving feedback is difficult. So what we should do is to focus on the psychological triggers that may block our learning as individuals. Sheila Heen, in her book, Thanks for the Feedback, suggests that three main triggers may prevent our learning as leaders. Relationship triggers, identity triggers, and truth triggers. If we are feeling defensive, we should ask ourselves what the potential cause may be. And often we can explain it using one of those three triggers. Uh, the last thing that I want to chat about is the thing that would appear most obvious to us in building our self-awareness. Uh, introspection as a way of building self-awareness absolutely doesn't work. Thinking about ourselves isn't related to knowing ourselves. When confronted with challenging life situations or moments of frustration, we feel the need to try and analyze what went wrong. And the question we most often ask is why we try and dive deep and, and figure things out. Now, when we're in a bad mood, we may ask, you know, why am I so upset after that fight with my wife? When we experience a negative outcome, 
we often ask questions like, why me? Why did this have to happen now? When we ask why questions, it doesn't lead us to the truth about ourselves. In fact, what it does is it moves us further away from the truth about ourselves. Researchers like Tasha Urich and others have shown that it is nearly impossible for us to excavate our unconscious thoughts, our feelings and our motives. And because so much of it is hidden from our conscious awareness, when we do, we often end up inventing answers that feel true but that are dead wrong. We like to think of our brains as supercomputers that can rationally analyze situations and arrive at accurate conclusions. But it just doesn't happen that way. So what should we do then? Ask what instead of why. If you receive a negative performance review from your manager, Instead of asking questions like, why are we always at opposite poles or, or why are we like oil and water, ask a question like, what can I do to show her that I'm the best possible individual for this position? If you have just experienced something devastating, asking a question like, why me, yeah, doesn't help inspire hope. When we reframe the why and ask a question like, what's really important to me here? It can move us to doing things that bring joy, to focusing on actions that can move us forward. Why questions result in us looking in the rear view mirror. What questions move us forward? Have you ever worked with a truly self-aware leader? I'd be interested in hearing some of your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope that some of these tools have helped you and sparked some thought in terms of how you can become more self-aware as a leader. Again, if you thought this content to be valuable, please share it with somebody else. Give it a like and please subscribe to hear more about how you can build a better organizational culture, and how you can build better teams.